Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Rich Allen, who is in Dallas, Texas. How are you doing, Rich? I'm excellent. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> and I'm here in San Diego, actually uh, a little bit gloomy today. I always love to tell people about the weather in San Diego because uh, I get no sympathy uh, <laughs> from anywhere else in the world if you complain about the weather here. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So um, Rich is on a mission. His primary mission and purpose are focused on one single objective, and that's to put an end to small business failure. And he is the author of two books, uh, Tour to Profit, A 52-Stage Race to Grow Your Business, obviously themed after the Tour de France. Got your bike behind you? I ready, do. Ready to take on Alpe d'Huez and all those uh, climbs in exactly. the France, right? <laughs> and his more recent book, The Ultimate Business uh, Tune-Up, a simple yet powerful business model that will transform the lives of small business owners. So, uh, uh, first of all, Rich, give me a little bit of background. Um, give me uh, um, a little bit of um, background to this and and sort of where this came from because I know uh, you know the first chapter of your book is my dad the business owner so just yeah. just give me the history of the book and how this all came together. Yeah, John, I you know I I grew up in a large family. I've got eleven brothers and sisters, and my dad started his own business thinking that you know he was going to one day be hugely successful and leave a legacy for his his mm -hmm. eleven twelve kids and and uh, and and it didn't turn out that way. Right. I mean, his right. business was basically a disaster. And and at the time I was watching it and a, a part of it, but I had no clue how to help. And so I, like all my other brothers and sisters, we just escaped and went off to a better life. But I always wondered what it was my dad was missing. And, uh, you know, I, and so I became a student of business. And over the years, I had the opportunity to work for some fairly large companies, learn a lot. and also had the opportunity to to take the the helm of a, a fairly large manufacturing business and i had my opportunity to prove that i knew what i was doing with running a business and frankly john it scared me to death um, yeah. but but i'd say the nice thing is in 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 many ways that your dad did leave you a legacy because he left you a legacy of curiosity into finding out how you could make a small business really sing right he did. I, you know, my dad is, uh, my dad taught me everything and, you know, the discipline of hard work and uh, the a never quit attitude. But, but he took the approach that most business owners take, John, and that's where, you know, they, they think that if they just work at it just a little bit harder, mm -hmm. it'll get better. And in fact, working harder isn't the answer in business. So what are some of the what are some of the lessons that you have learned that you impart to small business owners? As you said, I mean, just continue to work harder and harder and harder basically just runs the person into the ground if they're not if it's not the right work. Right. You know, John, the probably the biggest and kind of overarching lesson that I've learned is oftentimes as business owners, we may even know what we want to accomplish. But oftentimes we are we have a team of people who have no clue how a business might work. And we don't know how to communicate to them in a way that even gets them engaged in the business. And so as a result, they'll do exactly what we say, but nothing more because they don't necessarily know what the more would be. Right, right. No, I, I think that's a really fair point is because when you, when you hire people for a job, uh, they come to do a job and they, as you say, there's plenty of people who go through their careers doing very fine jobs at different companies without ever really understanding how the, that company's business operates. No, that's exactly right. And that's why when I was faced with this dilemma, you know, I had a, I, we, we had bought um, a $30 million business, had about 200 people in it and it wasn't functioning very well. And no one in the business really cared. They just were showing up for a paycheck. And so mm -hmm. long as the paycheck kept coming, they would continue to do what they were doing. But it wasn't what was going to make the business ultimately successful. So I had this brilliant idea to use my bike as a metaphor for a business because I, I kind of had this idea that, that people understood how a bike worked. And if they could mm -hmm. just relate the bike to a business, then they would 
they could see how a business would work. And in fact, it, it works brilliantly. It's crazy how well it works. So how did you, so let's, let's explore that for a moment. How did you take the bike as a metaphor? You know, I had, I, it was just one of those brainstorm ideas that happened in the shower, right? Where all great ideas happen. Um, and I, I started working it through and I just started taking every component of the bike and applying it to a principle or a portion of a business. Mm -hmm. And um, it's crazy, John, that it, it kind of, it, it fits so nicely. For example, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll tell you the place where it starts, right? We all know how to ride a bike. We know what the handlebars are for, right? To steer. Yeah. But when we're kids, how do we like to ride a bike? With our hands in the air, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Because that makes us part of the cool kid group, Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Well, as business owners, we have to steer our business. But many of us are, are riding our business bikes with our hands in the air. And, and so we have to steer it. Well, how do you steer a business? Well, I think you do it by painting a picture of the vision of the future you want. Mm -hmm. I think you do it. There are three things. You have to paint the picture. You have to set the standards for what you expect. And then you have to have a cause or a purpose that everybody can rally around and get excited about that's bigger than just you being successful as a business mm -hmm. owner. Right. Yeah. No. I, I. I totally agree. And I think that is the. I, I think that is the thing that a lot of businesses struggle with is that they set out and small business people set out with this idea that they want to have a successful business, but that's. But they haven't really uh, properly defined the vision of where they want to go to. So it's kind of vague, right? Right. Yeah. It's in their head. Yeah. Look, every business owner has it in their head, but the people on their team team can't get excited about what's in their head. So we exactly. have to communicate it and share it often enough for people to say, wow, that's, that's exciting. That's compelling. I want to help you make that happen. Yeah. Cause somebody told me recently, and I thought this is a great metaphor. It's like when you go, um, if I was to sell you on a vacation, right. And I started off by saying, um, you know, Hey Rich, uh, yeah, you're going to go to Hawaii. Uh, but first of all, you're going to have to get an Uber to the airport. You're going to have to, you know, get on a plane. You'll maybe on a plane for a while. You probably have to switch planes in LA, and that'll you probably have to change terminals, and then you'll fly over to. Then you'll have to go to the oh, blah blah. Right? That's not very compelling, right? Is right. It? But if I started off talking to you about the beach in Hawaii and you sitting on the beach with a you know your chosen beverage in your hand, then we can start to talk about how to get there. You're, that's a perfect, a perfect way to explain it because what tends to happen as business owners is we are so close to what's going on in the business that we're, we're in the, we're in the baggage handling system, yeah. right? We're in the, we're, we're trying to get our way through security in our business when, when the vision is the reason we're doing this is to get on the beach. Mm -hmm. But all we can see in front of us is the traffic and the Uber line and the security line. Yeah, and all that our employees can see is their own little part of the process, right? They don't really exactly. care about what, what comes before or what comes afterwards as long as they're executing their piece. Right. And that's a, so that's where it all starts, right? That's the big, that's the big starting point. And then I tell people this, John, I tell them that, that look, in, in business, we have to have a structure or a framework. Just like on my bike, I have to have a mm -hmm. frame that holds all the pieces together. Well, in business, that frame is our organization structure, our roles and responsibilities, and our accountability system. And without those, nothing holds together. Things start mm -hmm. to get loose. They fall apart. We have gaps. And things go broken, and that's when we get frustrated. Right. And, and, and it's not a one-size-fit-all frame, is it? Because it depends on your business. Because it's like, I mean, if you take it, if you were in the Tour de France, you'd have a frame like the one you have. If you're going mountain biking, not so much. You're going to need a much heavier frame. No, you're absolutely right. The frame is dependent upon the business that you're in and the, the type of customer that you're going after. And where, So if you're an online business, your frame might be different than if you're a manufacturing business. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a service business, it might be different than if you're uh, th that if you do something virtually. So it's it depends on your your setup and your and the course you're going to ride. But every business needs a frame of some kind. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so um, so we're looking at a bike and we've got the, the steering, we've got the frame. What about the wheels? You know, here's the way I say this, John. This is, there are only two places on a bike where the rubber meets the road. That's true. There are also only two places in a business where the rubber meets the road. And the front wheel represents our ability to win new customers. Mm -hmm. So it's our marketing and sales side of the business, the front end of our business. The back wheel is our ability to serve those customers, to deliver on the promise that we made on the front wheel. And those, frankly, are the only two places where the rubber really meets the road in business. Yeah, and I love that analogy because otherwise, and because you see oftentimes, you know, we get so focused on new business and on marketing and all of this stuff that the front wheel is huge. And then we forget about the delivery. So the back wheel is tiny. So you end up with one of those penny farthing bikes, right, from, uh, exactly. from a few centuries ago. But you're right. I mean, in order, for, in order to, for this bike to work, like in order for you to win a sprint in the Tour de France, both wheels have to be operating at their optimum. Right. And the, and the deal is they have to be going at the same speed. Yeah. Because, as you said, if the front wheel goes faster than the back wheel, then we're going to be making promises that we can't deliver on. And people will pick up their phones and they'll tell their audience of friends how bad we are. Mm -hmm. And they'll spend more, they'll spend no dollars, but influence more people than we have marketing dollars to overcome it. Yeah. We can't because let that happen. Yeah, because the reality is that when you de when you deliver something uh, that a customer feels that they bought, all you've done is met baseline expectation. If you under deliver, exactly. then you're obviously going to be in trouble. But you have to you have to at least meet that baseline uh, expectation, and then hopefully you can do something to go above and beyond. That's exactly right. That's why the back wheel is so important because not only do I have to deliver on the promise. But I've got to have systems and processes in place in my in my operations to surprise my customer by over delivering, either mm -hmm. beating the deadline or giving them something that they didn't realize they were going to get. That's when that's when it really when magic happens. Mm -hmm. And what about the brakes? When do you apply the brakes? You know, the brakes, John, are the, believe it or not, most most business owners don't have brakes on their bike. Mm -hmm. Um, they're the, because the brakes are our financial controls. They're the things right. that allow us to control the speed on the front and the back end of our business. So I tell people, look, if you don't, if you don't get a P&L, a balance sheet, a cash flow forecast, and you don't run your business by, with a budget, you're essentially using no brakes. Mm -hmm. If you're running it by your bank account, um, you're just roll along hoping that things are going to go right. And that's not a good strategy. No, no, not at all. Because I mean, obviously, if you're just running it by your bank account, uh, you're not legislating for surprises. You're not really calculating future costs. You're not doing modeling where you can say, okay, well, if this month we bring in X amount, then we're fine here. This is what we need. If we bring in Y amount, then we need a little more here. So yeah, you've got to be constantly doing some modeling and forecasting. That's, a, that's right. Otherwise, you're using the rearview mirror to ride your bike. And that's not, yeah. that's not safe. Yeah. And eventually you you're going to run. Turns. Yeah. You're going to run out. You're going to, uh, you're going to cycle off the edge of one of those uh, steep turns in the Tour de France. Exactly. And, you, and you're going to look around for your team car and you're going to realize you don't have one. <laughs> exactly. There you, you get it. You get it. You've been there. <laughs> so what's the, what, what's the, any other pieces? Um, you know, the most the important part, uh, and may, this may be not the most important, but one that, that gets the most uncomfortable, John, is the seat. Yeah. Right? And the seat is not where the business owner sits. If you, if you follow the Tour de France, mm -hmm. you know the uh, owner is in the car. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On, the, on the walkie talk here, on the radio, telling the team what to do. But the riders are the team members. And so we have to have the seat positioned in a way so that they can, so it's really comfortable to ride and they can put maximum power to the pedals. So the seat represents our people programs, the, the discipline and how we hire people, how do we onboard them, our compensation programs, our reward systems, our communications plans, all those things that make people say, wow, I love working for this company. 
Yeah, no, I think that's and I think that's such a great point because yeah, you would you know people would instinctively say, well, yeah, you know, the owner is sitting on the bike. You say, well, right. no, actually, you're right. The owner is not sitting on the bike. The owner is making sure that the right person is sitting on the bike and that every all the pieces are working together and that bike is going as fast as it can. Yeah, all too often the owner does sit on the bike, mm -hmm. and when the owner sits on the bike and they put all their energy into peddling the business, they don't have the time or energy to do the things they need to do to, to set the future and do the strategy and, and think ahead for the business. So we, we want to get the business owner off the seat and put team members on there that are, that are, that will pedal just as hard. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you think about it, I mean, that's if we, if we continue with the, the tour de France analogy, that's like the person who's financing the team, setting up all the sponsorships, uh, arranging everything, uh, making sure they get the right team and then getting on the bike and cycling themselves. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's truly, you know, it's, isn't it crazy how, how it all ties yeah. together? Very nice. Yeah. 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 It, it really is. And you know, the only reason I did this, John, is because, I wanted guys in the shop to be able to understand it. And as soon as I kind of took them through that routine, they said, oh, I know what's wrong with our bike. I know what's broken. I know what's rubbing. Um, and we started fixing up the business as if it were a bike. Yeah. And I think that's such a, I mean, that's such a, a fantastic uh, analogy. So listen, as we're bumping up the end of our uh, end of our time here, do you tell people a little bit more about yourself, your company and how they can learn more about you? Yeah. So we, you know, our job is simply to help business owners empower their teams, engage them in a way, in a radical way in their business. And, and that's what we do. So, you know, you can, you can find me, um, um, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm obviously a Tour de France guy. My business name is Tour de Profit. So, Very good. And, and if you want to find me, you can find me at uh, Tour de Profit, one word, tourdeprofit.com. In fact, I set up a page for your listeners, John. It's oh, tourdeprofit.com backslash sales pop. So Excellent. if somebody goes there, I put a copy of my book there so they can, if they want a free copy of the book, um, they can they can request it there and a couple other free resources that they might find valuable. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. And our, our, our listeners and viewers will appreciate that. Listen, this has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, like it was nice. It was nice. Uh, it was nice cycling around the Tour de France for a little bit. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And we aren't even as tired as going up the the. Tour de Malloy or whatever it is. Exactly, exactly, yeah. And, uh, and we're clearly not using any performance-enhancing drugs, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, thank goodness. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for the expert interview really soon. Thank you.